Hi everyone, I'm Archangeli. If you're new, welcome. And if you're an old friend, welcome back to my channel. If you watched the Tokyo shopping haul that I posted last week, obviously you know I was in Tokyo for about five days in mid-January. It was kind of cold, but I ate a lot of amazing food. I spent more money than I probably should have and I had a great little trip. And while we were there, Volks had the after event for the Doll Party 42. If you're new, you may not know what that is, so I'll do a quick summary. Uh, a few times a year, Volks will have uh, fan events little convention type things where they will sell and launch new items. They will have a, a dealer's area for artists to make their own things to sell. And they will also preview new items that are up and coming. And so they had the most recent one, which was the doll party or Dolpa 42 in December. And for friends uh, across Japan and, and overseas that can't make it to those events, they have what's called the after event, usually a month later. And that's an online event where they launch basically all of the same things. Not the independent artist stuff, just the Volks branded items. So they have it in the stores uh, across Japan and also uh, online. So it all goes online at 10 a.m. when the stores in Japan open at the same time. And you can try your luck to try to purchase the items at that point. So because I was in Tokyo, I thought, okay, let's go to the after event and try my luck because I had quite the shopping list of things that I liked. And if you watched the last video, you saw I've got a lot of the clothes, but they were also releasing a couple of dolls at this doll uh, after event. So I was like, oh, let's try and get these dolls because there was one I really wanted and a couple that my friends wanted. So I was like, let's let's see what we can do. So the past couple of years, Volks has been having online surveys uh, asking for their fans, what are the best items? What should we release? And so two of the doll dreams that they re-released at this Dolpa were voted the best. And while the one that I'm going to show you today is Arl, uh, Arl Naja or Aruru Naja from the Puyo Puyo games. Uh, I'm not familiar with the character or the game, so if I mispronounce that, I'm sorry. <laughs> and they also re-released uh, Renko Kanzaki from the Idol Master Cinderella Girls. And I, I picked her up as well. So let me just talk about how the after event process worked. Volks announced on their Twitter a couple days ahead, uh, they gave their customers a bit of information saying, you know, if you're coming to the Akihabara store, this is where we want you to start the lineup at whatever time. And around 8.45, our staff will do a line lottery and the store will open at 10. Usually the shop opens at 11, so they were opening an hour earlier. So if you're not familiar what this line lottery means, you can show up whatever time you want. They don't want you lining up overnight because it's not safe. It's like you could get mugged, it's cold. It's just not a pleasant thing. So you can show up whenever you want, but they do not want you to line up overnight. So when Javi and I got there about 7.30 in the morning, uh, he and I were 10th and 11th in line. He then realized he forgot his passport and had to go back to the hotel. Luckily, we weren't too far away. <laughs> um, so, you know, the line builds and at 8.45, around 8.30 actually, the bulk staff started arriving just to answer questions and reshape the line a little bit so that we weren't blocking the entire sidewalk. And then at 8.45, uh, the manager of the store came up with a, a bucket with numbers, kind of like bingo, and pulled numbers out of the bucket. And the number that he drew, which happened to be 111, uh, was now the new start of the line. So if you were the lucky person, uh, that was number 111, you became the front of the line. And so uh, a little bit before they did the lottery, what the Volk staff did is they went down the line and they handed everybody a little slip of paper with their uh, number, like your actual position in the line. So my hobby was number 10, puppy 52 was 33, I was 44, and there were about 175 people in the line at that point when they handed out the numbers. Goodness. <laughs> so 175 people, they drew 111. So that person became the first person in line. Person 110 sucks to be you. Too bad. Not, not entirely. However, so they rearranged the line. So person that's 111 becomes first. Uh, the person that was 112 becomes second in line and so forth. So because there were 175 people in that line at that point, when they got to the end of the line, they flipped it around. So the people that were one, two, three, four, five joined that end of the line. So my husband who had ticket number, position number 10, ended up being number 85 in line. That can be lucky or, or not so lucky. It really, really depends. 
Um, so they don't actually cut off the line completely at 8.45. People can still join the line. It's just that they don't get the little lottery slips uh, for the lineup. But if you're, get, you're, if you're coming into the lineup, let's say at nine o'clock or 10.30, you're trying to get into the shop to shop. You're not after the lottery items or first dibs on any clothing. So, <clears throat> excuse me, so after they rearranged the lineup, the Volk staff came through and they, they had a little card saying, you know, this is Aro, this is Ranko, are you interested in either one? And you say yes or no. And if you say yes, they give you a little slip of paper and they staple that to your number in line. You hold on to that. <laughs> and actually, we found out that they actually had 100 of each of the Dolphy Dreams in stock in the store that day. So remember how I said Hubby was number 85? That ended up being very lucky because we were able to pick up both dolls. Uh, so around, I want to say 9.30, they moved the line around the block and into the fire escape, into the emergency stairwell of the Radio Kaikan building, which is where the Volk store is. Except I looked at the stairwell and thought, oh, this is interesting because Volks is on the eighth floor. Well, wouldn't you know it? We hoofed it up eight flights of stairs. <laughs> so if you're older or have mobility issues or you're just physically not able to make it up eight flights of stairs, I really don't recommend going to an after event, at least not the one in Akihabara. Because even though we didn't do all eight flights of stairs at once, if you're not physically able to do that, it would be a very unpleasant experience for you. And at the same time, remember it was, the stairwell is not enclosed, so all the wind was coming in, some of the rain, it was started snowing at one point, it was really cold. Uh, so cold in fact that the Volk staff actually came in and handed out little like hand warmer packets uh, to try to keep us toasty while we were waiting in the line. Uh, they don't want you drinking or eating in the stairwell, so it's just kind of lots of people smushed in together. I want to say there were maybe about 350 or 400 people that showed up in total for the after event that day. And so the ones that showed up later were just trying to shop. They weren't necessarily there for the dolls. So what the Volks staff told us and what it says on the slip of paper is that if you've gotten the little uh, voucher for the doll already, you can leave the line. As long as you come back to the store before one o'clock to check uh, to pay, uh, that doll is guaranteed yours. So uh, the fellow that was in front of my hubby in line, he actually left and said, I'll see you later. Maybe. <laughs> and he went and did other stuff. Uh, and when he, we actually did see him again when we were leaving the store and it was almost one o'clock at this point, uh, the staff, you know, t basically told him to get to the back of the line and he had to go into the stairwell. <laughs> so really leaving the line doesn't always have any benefit unless you're only after the doll. Uh, if you want any of the clothing items, you should stay in this lineup. So after lining up, they open the doors at 10 o'clock. They only let people in in batches because obviously the store is not that big. Um, they weave the line throughout the store. And if you watched the video that I took of the Volk store last week, you would have seen that I took a video of some of the, the new clothing they released. And if you noticed at the bottom, they had little uh, vouchers, like with a little picture of the clothing item and the price. So if you wanted that clothing item, you just picked up the little voucher. So you didn't have a big shopping basket full of stuff. You just picked up whatever uh, tickets for these clothing items you wanted. And then when you got into the line to pay, the Volks staff, this, this is actually a very organized system, uh, would take the vouchers from you and give you just a little like um, a token with a number on it. And they would go in the back and prepare all of the items that you selected. And this way they double check that you're only getting one of each item so there's no uh, miscommunication or, or, or uh, disappointment when you get to the cash register. You're only allowed one of each new release. So they check the tickets, make sure you're getting only one of each different item, and then they go prep your shopping basket and put the corresponding number in it. So when you get to the cash register, you just give them your little token and they grab your basket and you pay. If you are a foreigner and you brought your passport with you, uh, you get uh, the, a tax-free price. And I think the sales tax in Japan now is 10%. So that's quite a substantial amount of money uh, that you save if you've remembered to bring your passport. And then you pay and, and then you go. This whole process took quite a while. We didn't leave the store until almost one o'clock actually. 
But anyway, so that was the Volks lineup. It was cold and I was hungry and cranky and then we went for lunch. We went back to the hotel, dropped off all of our shopping and, and went for lunch and that was my day. <laughs> so I haven't even gotten to unboxing anything yet. So let's, let's do this quickly. So um, because this doll wasn't for me, I was quite concerned how to bring it home safely because it would have to go in my checked luggage and my big suitcase in order to fit the box. So luckily Volks does sell these little shipping boxes now uh, at the store so you can you pay for them and I think they were about a thousand or one thousand five hundred yen however much the boxes were and you can take this home so it's actually flat packed they bundle it all, all up quite neatly uh, and then you just do what you need with the box we actually brought bubble wrap with us so that we had it uh, so let's just take this out now so when we went to Japan, we actually brought bubble wrap and uh, packing tape and, just, and scissors, just in case, because you never know. So we have had to ship things home in the past, um, and it's kind of troublesome if you need to try to look around and find these little uh, packing supplies. So that's just, you know, empty shipping box. And this was the bubble thing that we brought with us. And the doll does come in this plastic sleeve. Uh, to protect it from, I guess, in the case of the day we were there, rain, uh, to protect the box. So here is, I'm guessing this is the new type of Dolphy Dream box because uh, Ryan Coke also came in this type of, it's like a pearlescent finish uh, cardboard box. And I'll do a quick turn so you can see it's quite plain just this Dolphy Dream. There's nothing on the back except for some branding and a picture of Arl Carbuncle and her little Puyu plushies. So I'm gonna move to uh, the island so that I can open this and unbox this. Um, well, I guess I can open and show you little bits first before we get up close. So Arl was first released in May 2016 at the Dolpa 35 and uh, she happens to be head sculpt number 110 if this interests you and she is sculpted by uh, Misaki Serika who is one of the Volks uh, house sculptors and this time they've refreshed the doll so she's on the oops the door the mini Dolphy Dream uh, F3 body so it's similar to the F3 uh, body that the, the bigger Dolphy Dreams are on now, I guess. And she comes with the small bust. And this is in the, they call it the flesh skin tone now. It, usually, it used to be called the normal skin. So I'm glad, I'm glad they've changed the name because normal just doesn't sound very nice. She retailed for um, 6,000, sorry, 62 thousand yen that's the price here on the top of the box um hey kitten all right so here is little arl so let's move over to the island so that we can get close up and i can show you everything all right so i've laid out all of the stuff that was in her box so she came with uh her little pamphlet brochure i'm not going to open this because this is not not mind open officially right um, there's the doll her wig her outfit her little boots this is her carbuncle plushie and the puyo puyo and I believe with this release the red and the purple puyos are new uh, the first time she was released she came with the green guy so let's unbox her so this is the little ribbon and hook system that Volks has updated to. Uh, they don't have the little ribbon ties anymore. And I believe that this box is a standard size now. So the mini Dolphy Dreams used to come in a smaller box. And I'm just looking at the little notches on here. I'm guessing that they use the same insert and size box for the big girls as well as the minis now. I guess it's it's cool. It's just, you know, fewer resources they need to keep in stock. Um, just a little thing I noticed. So she's in her plastic. Let's 
pull her out. And let me just hold her up so you can have a quick look. This is my first time with playing with the F3 uh, Mini Dolphy Dream body. I have a Mini Dolphy Dream 3, um, but the F3 is a little newer to me. So if uh, what I'm noticing is that when I bend her, her legs kind of want to slowly come down. I mean, she still holds her poses. Like her arms are nice and, actually her elbows are really nice and tight. Her wrists feel good. It's, I think the hips and the knees that are a little bit loose, but it's okay, I can deal with that. She does come with uh, the normal pose hands. So if you want her to hold anything, you would have to purchase uh, additional uh, optional hands from Volks. All right, so let's get to dressing this little girl up. Um, so my cats are making all kinds of noise in the background. Uh, silica gel. So this is, I'm guessing it's her little tube top. And we have a skirt. This is, I'm just looking at the diagram, um, a piece that goes on her back, I guess, like the back of her skirt. Figure that out. Um, hair clip, that's kind of cute. And socks and I guess little arm gauntlet type things. <coughs> more clothing bits. So here we have her little puffy sleeves. So they're not actually, it's not a one piece dress, they're separate pieces. Um, oh, these are cute. She's got little frilly lace bloomers. And this is her underdress. Cute, okay. So, despite what I said, I think I will have a look at the instruction book only because I don't want to put the outfit on wrong or break anything. So I'm cutting this open. And hopefully there's instructions. Oh good, okay. So there's a breakdown of all of her pieces and how to dress her up. So let me just have a quick look at that. They suggest that you take her wrists or her hands off so that you can get the little puffy sleeves and the gauntlets on her arm. Uh, they tell you how to put the bra on or this little bandeau piece. Okay. That's all. Oh, this is a cape, it's not a you can see it's a little cape. See, I told you, I didn't know anything about this character. All right. So this little dress has nice little metal snaps. So this is nice and sturdy. You just uh, put your fingernail in there and pop it open. Don't, don't just pull. You don't want to uh, tear the snaps off or rip the little dress. And I'll just actually just pull her hands and the wrist pegs out right now while I'm dressing her. I guess I did most of my chatting uh, while I was sitting on the couch. There's not that much I need to uh, talk about while I'm dressing her. Actually, so if you remember my Sabre unbox unboxing video that I did last year, 
Uh, Volks, I think, has updated their clothing tags so that the little Volks logo is done in a pale yellow now instead of on, on black, which is nice. It just means it won't stain your doll. Um, I actually never had issues with their clothing tags staining, but I guess either people did or it was enough of an issue for them to change the, the garment tags. Okay, so, and I mean, when you're spending so much money, especially on a limited doll, you don't want to risk staining her right off the bat. Oh, this is cute. Okay. And then we put the sleeves on. So let me just have a look. All right, so there's a tighter elastic, shorter bit, and then a longer frilly bit at the bottom. So this is the, I was just trying to determine which is the top and bottom piece. Or which, which way's up and which way's down. So that goes on her arm, like so. And this piece. And we'll get the little uh, gauntlet pieces. Now these are not white lined on the inside, so there is a potential that these could stain. Just putting that out there. Hopefully if Volks was smart, they used uh, a trim that doesn't stain. However, I've learned with Volks to never give them the benefit of the doubt when it comes to stain testing. All right, so this. It doesn't seem to go all the way up the arm. And even if I look um, on the photo, it does seem to cover the wrist joint a little bit. So I'm not going to try to push it all the way up the elbow. We'll get the other little gauntlet on. Now, for my friends that are watching this in North America, Volks USA is actually running the lottery right now. Uh, from February 1st till February 10th, they're running their online lottery to, uh, if you're interested in Arl or in Ranko Kanzashi, uh, or sorry, Kanzaki, not Kanzashi. If you're e interested in either of them, hey, no, 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 go away, cat. Um, if you're interested in either of those dolls, they are doing their lottery right now until February the 10th. Uh, the price on Volks USA for Arl is $620 US. And considering that she was 62,000 yen, that's almost actually the same price. That's before shipping and before any sales taxes, of course. But um, it beats trying to get her on the aftermarket. Uh, yeah, that's her little skirt. So this skirt has a little petticoat with the lace trim on it and the pleats. And this is her little uh, tube top, bustier, whatever you want to call it. And how this does up, there's a hook on one side and a little loop of thread right on the edge here. So that's what you're trying to hook this into. So I'll show you if I hook like that, that's what you're going for. Don't be looking for an, a metal hook on the other side, you won't find one. And this is a common technique that Volks uses just to keep things kind of seamless and um, just to lay flatter on the dolls. Because if you have the snaps here and then you have more hooks, it just gets bulky really fast. Um, so yeah. Like I was saying, it is bulky here, so we're gonna put her face down and try to just make sure. Yeah, it does say you have to give it a little bit of a pull 
and there is a right and a wrong side. Uh, the more curved side goes on the top of the chest here. So then we just kind of adjust that so that it's sitting in the right spot. Oh, that doesn't look good. Hang on. That's what happens when I try to adjust things upside down. So let's give that a little... There we go, that's better. Okay, and then we, oh, okay, that's it for the instructions. So I guess from here on in, they kind of expect you to know what to do. Do that once. So we'll put her socks on next. They're just little white socks made of like stretchy spandex. Uh, nothing exceptional here. sock and second sock yeah so we can put her little hands back on and let's put on her boots so these are Now I will admit, I did open this when I was in Tokyo just to do a quick inspection. Uh, I've had the worst luck with Volks before. One of my resin dolls came with two of the same shoe, as opposed to a right and a left. And I've had one of my dolls come straight out of the box with two left feet. So I just opened it quickly to make sure that there was a right and a left shoe, that she had a right and a left foot, that she had right and left hands, and that she wasn't a complete floppy disaster but then aside from that I packed everything back up um, because I wanted to make sure I didn't have any issues uh, coming back because well, once I've left Japan I have no recourse for any kind of exchange if there were any problems so I just wanted to make sure uh, everything was in good condition before we brought her overseas so this little boot is white line on the inside the zipper is blue so if any part of this touches the doll, there is a stain risk. And I guess that's why they gave you white socks. Um, but this is a really cute little boot with the little frills and bows. It's a little bit uh, loose, but I find that most mini Dolphy Dream shoes fit loose. I find that they're made to fit the mini Super Dolphys, the NSD resin dolls or it, that just seems to be like the shoe last that they use. And the mini Dolphy Dreams just have very, very tiny feet. Um, but since this is an enclosed shoe, you can't really tell. But I mean, if I hold this boot up, you can see where the foot ends and where, let's do this, where the foot ends and where the boot ends, there's a lot of space. There's almost a full centimeter of space. And so that's why the shoe feels a bit loose. But since this is an enclosed shoe and it zips up, it's not a big deal. Okay, let's put her little cape on. So they've tacked this bow here with blue thread, which I think is not the best idea. And this does up with this little, it's a little elastic loop that goes over this little pearl here. Um, well, these little medallions are actually puffy. That's quite cute. Let's, I guess I can put the cape on and then we can do her hair. Let's sit her up. Now I'm trying to get this cape on with the head attached. That just pops on quite easily. Excuse me, I'm gonna drink some water. Okay, so next let's grab her wig. 
And if this is your first Volks doll, brand, out of, brand new out of package, Volks wigs are attached to the cardboard with this little plastic dangly bit that you have to cut off. Okay, kitty, go away. You're way too nosy for your own good. Um, and that's how you know it's a new wig. It's, it's still attached. So I'm going to be the one to cut this one. Garbage. I hope the cat doesn't nudge my tripod. So, a little bit of paper, wig cap or wig holder, and grab the other piece of that plastic thing that was holding the wig. Um, don't forget about it. So, this feels like a, a thermal or heat safe type of hair fiber. Some folks wigs are not heat safe. This does feel like it is. Um, and it's got cute little bangs cut into it and this like blunt hairdo and the little tail in the back. So the inside of the wig cap is skin tone. It's nude, which is nice because it means it will not stain. So let's put this wig onto Aruru. front to back and let me just make sure I've positioned this nope I did not do that very well <laughs> so we just kind of give that a little there we go so then her little hair bow goes on to the little blue thing here at the back of her hair and this is really cute. It's just like a little, it's on a wire. So if you look in the instructions, it just says bend it and then wrap it around, which is what I'll do. So we're just gonna bend that a little bit. Kitten's having kibble now. Last time I made a video, it was construction. This time it's just cat noise. So this just kind of clamps around like that. Oh, that's, that's quite clever. Have a look, it's cute. Okay, and all right, I'm gonna put some of this back in. And let's open up her little friends and have a look at at least one or two of them. So this is her carbuncle and he's a little, you can hear, that's an ASMR right there, a little bean baggy uh, type creature. He's stretchy and squishy and oh, he's fun. So he's called carbuncle. Oh, you can hold your friend. And then these guys, I have no idea the context that they fit into the game. Um, maybe they're like, you know, fire, earth, and ice elements, uh, something like that. So these are all individually packaged. Um, I'm just gonna open this green guy. Oh yeah, he's quite similar, that beanie stress ball kind of, um, yes, friend. Oh, he's so cute. All right, so this was Arl. Come into some better lighting here so that you can have a look at her face up. Arl actually has navy blue eyeliner and like a yellowish eyeshadow that you couldn't really tell over uh, on the island. And she has a really pretty 
and fresh peach blush and some like a pretty pink peachy pink gloss on her lips it's cute And all her little Puyo friends with their funny faces. <laughs> 